Hi there, today we're going to outline the uh, plugin configuration for the for our WordPress blog. First thing to do is to log in to the admin area. Once we're in the uh, administration area here, what you want to do is click on plugins and I'm assuming at this point you followed the last uh, video on WordPress configuration and you already installed your plugins. And you'll see here I've installed and activated all of the recommended plugins for this particular blog. The reason we know they're activated is because if they were, these were not activated, this would not say deactivated, it would say activate. So these are ready to go. What we'll do here is um, we'll start out, we'll go in order here, starting with all-in-one SEO pack, and I'm going to show you how to uh, get the uh, each plugin set up and uh, running smoothly. So if you head over to the left sidebar here, under settings, you'll see all-in-one SEO. And you're going to click on that, and it's going to take you to the page that allows you to uh, configure this plugin. First thing you want to do here is enable the plugin. Very important. Now, there are actually a lot of changes that you can make to this plugin, but we're going to leave everything as, uh, or not everything, we're going to leave most things as default. Um, you'll see there's a lot of stuff, but fortunately, all we're going to do is change these three sections here. Uh, home title, home description, and home keywords. So under the first section here, home title, what you're going to want to do is enter the primary keyword phrase. That's going to be the title of your blog and nothing else. And under home description, what we're going to do is add one, a one sentence description with the primary keyword phrase included. So it'd be something like this, like I'll just paste what I've already uh, done. And then under the uh, keywords, what you want to do is enter the uh, keyword phrase group for that particular site, which I've also copied and I'll paste. So it's going to be, this is what we've used, the format that we've used, it's worked really well and um, we recommend that you stick to it. Now for this particular plugin, the all-in-one SEO plugin, that's all we're actually going to change. So once you've made the changes, double check that the plugin status is enabled, and then click on update options. I just want to show you really quickly here. Let's say we enter all the information and we leave it set as disabled. Click on update options. Now You'll see at the top here, it will tell you that it's not enabled at this point, which is good. It's got this big red uh, thing up here that says it has to be uh, enabled in order to uh, work. So anyways, I'll go back down here, enable it, and once it's enabled, we are good to go. And we'll head on to the next plugin over here. Back on the left sidebar here under settings, the next plugin that we will uh, configure is the easy privacy policy. Now this is a very easy one to uh, set up. What you'll do here is just head a little further down the page, click here on create privacy page. And what we're going to do here is just head down. You want to confirm that uh, the blog name is correct. Whatever you want the page title to be, privacy policy should be fine. The URL of the page policy. And the email that you want people to uh, be able to view. If you want to make any modifications to the privacy policy, you can do it here. But you'll see that um, once you've entered your email address up at the top there, it's going to be replaced in here. So usually I'll just, I'll just leave it as default. There's nothing uh, special that I want to put in here. And once you've entered the information, you're going to click on Update Privacy Page. And you'll know it's been created because it'll tell you here that the privacy page has been updated. And to verify that it did work correctly, 
um, on the left sidebar here, click on pages. And you'll see it created the page for us. And I'll click on view. And you can see here that you have the full privacy policy page created. And it has the email that we specify within it. So that's it for the privacy policy plugin. The next thing we'll do is I'll go back here and we'll head to the next one. Back to left sidebar again here. The next one we'll uh, work on is the XML sitemap. This one's a little more, there's a little more to this one than the last two. We'll click on that. Now within the uh, XML sitemap generator uh, configuration area, there's a lot going on here, but there aren't many changes that have to be made. Um, the most important thing, once you've installed this plugin and activated it, um, there are a couple files that will automatically be um, put on your server. And what we have to do is make sure that these files are writable. Um, what I'm going to do is just run you through uh, how to do that. That's the most important step here to uh, making sure that the XML sitemap generator plugin works smoothly. So what I'll do is I'll pull up the, uh, the area where I can edit my files in cPanel and I'll show you how to uh, make the files writable. So what I've done here is I've logged into cPanel and I want to show you uh, where you can change the file permissions. Um, what you're going to do is click on File Manager under Files here. And once you click on that, the uh, screen that comes up is going to, normally it's going to be the root directory of your, uh, your website. And you'll see on the right side that it shows the file permissions for each file here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the correct file. There's two files here that we need to change the permissions on. And Again, we see the permissions over here on the right. And the files that we're looking at uh, changing are sitemap.xml and sitemap.xml.gz. So what we're going to do in both cases here is we're going to select the actual files. And then it'll give you the option of changing the uh, permissions of the file. All you have to do is make this 666, and that's going to make this writable. You see when I check these two off, it uh, comes up as 666 and submit. I'm going to do the same thing for the other uh, file and submit. And that's it. Now the files are writable. And heading back over to the main configuration area for that plugin, we can leave everything else uh, as the default setting in this case. So all we have to do is make those files writable and uh, this particular plugin will work. Uh, since we haven't changed anything we don't have to save that so what we're going to do is go on to the uh, next plugin and I'll show you how to configure that. So what we'll do is just head over into the uh, plugins uh, section again here and just outline what we've gone over so far. Um, we've configured the all-in-one SEO pack plugin the Easy Privacy Policy plugin, Google XML sitemaps, and the other two that we need to uh, take a look at are RSS include pages and um, WordPress database manager. Now, for RSS, RSS include pages, once you've activated that plugin, there's actually no configurations that need to be made. So just make sure it's activated. This one is in this case already, and it's good to go. Um, Basically, what it means is that it will any pages any pages you create on your site, uh, it'll automatically include them in the RSS feed. Whereas by default, WordPress would only uh, include the posts that you make into the RSS feed. For the uh, WordPress database manager plugin, this is great because it makes backing up your uh, your database is very simple, and you will want to do this. Um, fairly regularly, especially as your site gets larger. Um, in order to access the uh, features of this plugin, <clears throat> taking a look at the left sidebar over here, under database, you'll see that it's got a number of uh, different 
options over here, or different selections, I should say. Um, the only one that you really need to get familiar with at this point is Backup Database. And it's going to let you know if there's any issues that it's having, but you'll see right here um, that it's confirming the backup folder exists, the folder is writable. Um, essentially, everything in green here is good, and we have confirmation that everything's working properly. If something isn't working properly at this particular point, you'll see um, it, it'll be outlined here in red, and it'll let you know. Now, this is where you're going to come in. Um, Backup databases, we're going to come to uh, back up the database. And um, you'll see at the bottom here, you can either select to back it up as a zip file. Its default uh, selection is no. I like to do this usually though, so I'd select yes. And then in order to back it up, all you do is hit backup. And the backup uh, is successful. And if you want to find that backup, you want to head to uh, your root directory in your server. And now you'll see that the backup has been created. And by default, it will be um, created here under database. It says database backup too. And this is exactly where you're going to find it. You can change that if you want, but uh, you know, keeping things simple here, you may as well just leave it as is. This is how you know where to find where the backup is. So. What I'll do here is just a quick recap again of what we've gone over. Um, head back to the plugins uh, section here. Under all-in-one SEO pack, what we did was we left everything as default except for the site title, site description, and the site keywords, and then we enabled that plugin. For easy privacy policy, we left everything as default except we had to make sure that the email address uh, was correct or XML sitemaps plugin, everything in the actual plugin configuration is left as default. However, what we had to do was make two files writable on our server. And in order to do that, we had to log in to cPanel under File Manager and select the two files and make their permissions writable. Uh, they, should be, they should read 666. RSS includes is an automatic uh, configuration. There's nothing needed to be done for this one. And under WP DB Manager, all we had to do was backup the database. Everything else was uh, okay as default by clicking on backup database. So that's all. I uh, hope uh, this has been helpful to you guys. If you have any other uh, questions, uh, you can let us know on the forum or send us an email. Thanks.